The breadwinning woman. In Africa today, it is not uncommon for women to be breadwinners in their marriages. Now, a breadwinner is someone who earns the most income. And in some extreme cases, the breadwinner is also someone that is the sole earner. Now, most of the women I work with are sitting on this table. So it's, it is a common occurrence. We are no longer in the 60s or 70s, where it is typical to label women as stay-at-home moms, teachers, nurses, petty traders. These are now old school. If you are a woman sitting on this table, you should be commended. Well done. It is an honor, a privilege to have what people need. It also takes a lot of patience and hard work to be successful in your career or your business. So well done, girl. However, it can be really difficult to be a breadwinner in a relationship as a woman. I know times are changing. Notwithstanding, many women face a lot of challenges in their relationships when they are breadwinners. Issues can range from jealousy, verbal abuse, physical abuse, intimidation, even financial sabotage from hobby. The list is long. Issues like these make women afraid to marry men who earn less than they do. Even when there is a lot of prospects in the guy or lots of prospects in the relationship. Many women who are breadwinners are very unhappy. Some feel used and unappreciated. Now before you throw in the towel, let's try and work out how you can make your relationship work even when you earn more than your husband. There are three things we can consider today that will help you ease the tension at home. Tip one, do not apologize for making more money. You really shouldn't be uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable is not an attractive trait for women or men. You see, at the end of the day, you are a team. Whatever you do, whatever you achieve or earn, will help make the team become better. More money helps. So get your partner involved in the excitement of the progress, the extra money we accrue to the team. Now tip number two, do not become a dictator or an arrogant partner. Consider how you would like to be treated and accord your husband the same level of respect or more. You see, great relationships are based on mutual respect and trust. The key word here is mutual. So just because you earn more doesn't give you the right to become an evil queen in your relationship. Now tip number three, communicate. Communicate, communicate. I cannot emphasize that enough. In my opinion, this is the most important tip on this topic. Communication is so key. It's important to talk about how you feel and how the other person feels. It is important to discuss financial goals and make financial decisions together. It is important to be emotionally intelligent. In a relationship, communicate with your partner and not just with your pastor, your family, or your friends. My dear breadwinning ladies, I want you to know that you can build healthy relationships despite your financial status. Just always remember that in marriage, you are part of a team. You are partners in this partnership, and the company, organization, or corporation is called marriage. Wow. He's going to go first. Well, this issue, I've been in situations where some men who say they don't want their wives or their girls in which their relationship to have certain level of achievement before them. Let me give you an example. I had a case where a man was saying he'd like to go for a master's degree first before his wife. And I feel before you get into a relationship with anyone or marriage, you should know that nobody should pose a threat or barrier to your self-actualization and your dream. As a woman, you should have your vision for yourself. Nobody should be an obstacle to that. If somebody's going to be an obstacle to that, then that person is not fit to be your husband or your man. Mm. And 
being more successful as a woman is because of your personal inputs and your level of intellect and your capacity as a human being, your resources. It has no way or is mutually exclusive from that of your man or your husband. So your husband should learn to live and work with you, vice versa. The woman should not be intimidated by the man. The man should not be intimidated by the, by the woman. They should work together, synergize. So they are part of a team. No so I agree with you. So I like this male perspective. I would like the other male perspective right, before Shola. Um, um, based on your, what you have said, is times of change. And then I think us men, we just have to accept it now. And then it's not an easy thing for men to accept. Uh, but then this is, we have to accept. And behind every successful man, there's a woman. Understand? So behind every we, successful woman, too, there's a man. Okay, okay. Behind every successful man, there's a woman. So it shows how powerful women are. I think I will not feel threatened by my wife being successful because success has nothing to do with the relationship. The relationship has to do with love. And love has to be nurtured every day. So being a man, you're nurturing it. So if you're nurturing that love for that woman to fall in love and love, you learn about your woman every day. And I don't think you, you, there'll be any threat in it with the success. And then you know women, they have their mood swings. So no, when your wife doesn't want to talk to you whether she needs chocolate or hair <laughs> time, <laughs> other things like that, I say if you can learn that, and then I think you'll be good. But I, 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 I'm married, I have a wife, and then, so, and then she's behind her success. She played tremendous part, and then she worked with me from, from school days, and then, like I've been, I've known her for 10 years, so she played a, a huge part in my career today. So, and now, and I watch her sit back and let me be this person I am today. So now I said, you know what, it's time for you to be what you want to be. So, open play field, she got the keys to the door, go and be what you want to be. If there is love, she will stay. If there is no love, she will walk away. But I'm not going to be my insecurity, be on her way, not to be successful, be what she's supposed to be. We all have purpose. Mm -hmm. They allow people to exploit their purpose and be what they're supposed to be in this world. I think that's my sense. Fear for I love it. our generation. I love that's it. Thank you. That's working as a I love men. I hope they are not saying this because we're here. But no. Shola, <laughs> Shola, please go ahead. What's your opinion? For the record, so I'm the only single very, person in the room. I'm going to be very realistic. So, you know, when a woman is very successful, it's like um, the man is feeling. You know, the men have that ego. You know, the man is thinking, oh, okay. And, you know, when a woman is climbing that ladder of success, she's going to make sacrifices. That this, she has to be in Kano. She has to be in Kaduna. Like, I saw a publication where they said um, about four female MDs in Nigeria today mm -hmm. are Bank females. MDs. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw an interview with one of them, the spouse of one of them, and he said it's not been easy. The man was just being honest. He said, because he said there were days that his wife would just come back from work and say, honey, I'm going to Portaco tomorrow. I'll be there for two good weeks. And he said, he says, okay, I'll stay with the kids. It's not easy because that man also has his own plans for the week. But because his wife is traveling and he knows that she's climbing that ladder, he has to take the kids to school. He has to do everything she's been doing, you know. So it's not really easy, to be honest. So it takes a very, a man that is really very supportive, you know, a man that is patient. Confident that, in himself. Yes, a man that's willing to also sacrifice, you know. Because if you look at it, it's the woman that's supposed to be the way we grew up, the way our parents grew up. My mom, African, my mom, yes, my mom resigned. Tradition, yeah. Yes, my mom resigned a very, very, very um, sensitive role. If she had continued, my mom would have been one of the, you know, top educationists in Lagos. But because of my dad, she was climbing and climbing, and she wasn't having time for us. So my dad said, "I'm a banker. You can't be like this," and she had to step back. Right, wow. So. Yes, she had yeah, to no, that this was then. for us. This yes. was then. That was then. That it was a mutual saying, decision. No. Yes, so it's it's yes, and my mom is not complaining today. Mm, it's a mutual no decision. Regrets. She has no regrets. In fact, she says that, thank God she did it. But you know how many women would do that today? Because you're like, okay, this money, we need it. This money, we are making it, you know. Together. And you, and many, some, and you also want to see your wife succeed. Sure. You so know, let me so just say a little it's bit really. Uh, about my past and also. So, like, when I started my, 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 my business, so, and then I just got married and then my wife was pregnant. So, you know, being an entrepreneur, it's not easy funding your business and everything. Mm -hmm. So she had to be a stay-at-home mom with my son mm -hmm. for like two years. Mm -hmm. And now she's out there doing her own thing. I look at my son. I back my son in the morning. I drop my son to school. I it's, a part it's a partnership. So, yeah. So, so I feel like we just have to play that part. So both of you have to have a mutual understanding. Say, this is where I want to reach. When I got there, it's your turn. You can go wherever you want to go. I think it's all about communication, like you said. It's communication, communication, communication. If you fail to communicate, and I don't think marriage is going to happen. And I've been married for five years. Wow. So wow. Like you have to manage well done. And we should do the good idea. Right for 10 years. And you happily wow. married. And we happily married. Like, she, like, I got a well-successful business, thanks to God. And, but she's not working for me. 
She's not the one to work for you. I want to work for someone else. I'd be like, it's fine. Put your resume together. Communication. Mm. She's working for someone else. Like, my wife is earning less than what some of my employees are earning. Hopefully, she'll become a boss where she is very soon and have so her own I, empire. I'll be happy for her. Sure. So, like, I'm coming to Nigeria and I said, I have to go to Nigeria. And then, but I know my son will be an obstacle. I flew my son to join it, but I left my son somewhere. I was like, look after myself because my wife has to go to work. Mm. And I don't want me wow. coming to Nigeria really being selfish to yeah. her. Wow. Say, no, I'm coming to Nigeria, so you have to stay with the child. I'm go- no, I'm coming to Nigeria for my personal things. What about her personal things? I think mm. we need to get that kind of understanding, say, if you die today, who will be the next person to your son, mm. to your kids? Is your wife. Yes. Not anyone else. Sure. I don't trust anyone with my son compared to my wife. And then, if I don't give my wife the opportunity to have that muscle if I die today, and how is she going to look after my child? That's a good perspective. Very look at good it. one. Most of our mothers <laughs> married to an abusive man, or any of the man who cannot love them, because they have to do it because of the kids that maybe their husband passed away and left them with. Mm. Not even like this man can provide for my child. Mm. Unfortunately, they have to do whatever this man wants, whether it's an abuser or not. But my son, my child has to go to school. My late husband passed away, left me uneducated without a job. Now, yes, this man who is providing shelter. So, do you want your wife to go through that? No. no. So, of course, so I think we have to play an open book and be more mature. I said, if there's love and trust, your relationship will work. Talk about the success. Wow. Uh, you said it all. You said it all. Thank you so much. Patience. I mean, everybody, everybody is wow. right. And all relationships have their dynamics. And I think the start point is to get it right from the very beginning. Uh-huh. You have to choose right. Because when you choose the woman from your rib, like we say in the Christian Christendom, I mean, your, your issues are minimized. However, if you make mistakes in choosing, there is always a way. And it comes with openness. You have to agree and know that you are a team. Cutting off my arm is going to hurt the other part of my body. So communicate and always put the vision of both people in the front burner that every decision you make should be for the team. Because when you do that, the offspring, the results of that marriage is world changing. Exactly. And when we come back, Shola is going to be talking about maintaining professional integrity. I think it's going to be interesting. See you after the break.